I've heard all kinds of words associated with Jair Bolsonaro over the last couple of weeks. Authoritarian, autocratic, right-wing, populist, nationalist, even fascist. But I'm not hearing the word Christian very much. Funny that. Now, now I want to be super clear. Like The dude's religion isn't always important, right? Like when Benny Nets does something nationalistic and evil, I don't fault the media for failing to use the word Jewish when describing him. But when the person we're talking about is using Christianity as both his sword and his shield, it's all but impossible to understand the story without lingering on that Christianity issue for at least a few sentences. So just in case you're even less familiar with Brazilian politics than I am, let me sketch you a brief picture. During his quarter century plus in Brazilian Congress, Bolsonaro earned a reputation for being a racist, a misogynist, and a homophobe, and it was a well-earned reputation. He implied that women who got raped deserved it. He said he'd be incapable of loving a gay son. He once said, quote, if I see two men kissing each other on the street, I'll beat them up, end quote. And then on the issue of indigenous Brazilians, he once said, quote, it's a shame the Brazilian cavalry was not as efficient as the American who exterminated the Indians, end quote. He rose to power after a Congress that was corrupt, even by Latin American standards, impeached his predecessor for not being corrupt enough, as near as I can tell. So along comes this raging bigot in the mold of Donald Trump and starts making common cause with Brazil's equivalent of Tony Perkins and Pat Robertson. He ran on the guns and God ticket and won by demonizing the indigenous people and blaming them for Brazil's stagnant economy. Weird how immigrants and the exact opposite of immigrants can serve the exact same political function when you're that full of shit. And of course, one of the easiest ways to demonize said indigenous people is through religion. They're not Christian, so they're not good, right? And he doesn't just imply this or anything. Here's an actual quote from one of his campaign speeches. Quote, God above everything. There is no such thing as this secular state. The state is Christian and the minority will have to change if they can. The minorities will have to adapt to the position of the majority, end quote. And now he's using exactly that as the excuse, if not the reason, to burn down the Amazon. Now, I'm not naive enough to ignore the economic motives here. Yes, they want to clear more land and raise more cattle. Yes, they want to build dams and roads and protected areas. Yes, Bolsonaro himself is lining his pockets with bribes and shit from companies desperate to exploit the Amazon's natural resources. But the story he's selling the people is that this is all OK because the only people being harmed by it are those filthy little pagans. And curiously, this aspect hasn't earned a hell of a lot of attention from the American media. Sure, they've pointed out the danger these indigenous people are in, and they've even flirted with calling it by the deserved title of genocide. But nobody seems interested in pointing to the religious justification for it. I mean, to be fair, as soon as there was a big storm for Jim Cantore to stand near, they stopped talking about this environmental apocalypse altogether. But even leading up to that, Jesus's name wasn't coming up. Of course, the media is ready with their excuse that the real problem isn't the Christianity. It's the fact that he's so beholden to business. After all, there are Christian leaders all over the world, and most of them aren't burning down rainforests to run out the indigenous people. But pro-business doesn't explain why he spent so much of his political capital trying to erase the legal existence of the LGBT community. Right? This is a guy who's like on his first day in office, he removed LGBT concerns from the remit of the country's human rights ministry. And rolling back the rights of LGBT people is a damn near universal goal of Christian leadership. And, and that's the truth nobody wants to call out, right? What is Christianity but what Christianity does? Set aside the benevolent function they claim for a minute and ask what function it actually serves. Christians in Brazil have no issues whatsoever supporting a guy who openly endorses the torture and murder of his political opponents. So anything related to morality is out the fucking window. So what is it doing? Well, as I've said before, the only thing religion is now is a place to hide your bigotry. It's a convenient us when you have an inconvenient them. It's a means of subverting morality rather than instilling it. It's a tool that's been honed for millennia to remove the humanity of the people that stand in your way and wiping the slate clean of moral obligations to them. And even if you're inclined to argue that there's some other form of Christianity, some better form that exists elsewhere in the world or elsewhere in history or elsewhere in some platonic ideal, you have to admit that we're not seeing that form of it in Brazil. 
Yes, there are religious groups opposing Bolsonaro, but they are eclipsed by the ones supporting him. His base is a Christian base. He speaks their language. He promises to govern according to the Bible. He's the expression of the majority of Brazilian Christians by definition, and he's unabashedly evil. And that's what we're up against, even with the forces that are trying to reshape our government into a theocracy. The media is reluctant to use that word because they don't want to piss off their Christian customers. But in so doing, they're robbing those customers from an opportunity to see what the end result of the thing that they're fighting for looks like. The theocrats in waiting in our own country don't want you to know what a Christian nation really looks like. And the media are complicit in their deception. But here's what we should be learning from Brazil. We're up against a group of people that want the whole fucking world. And in their eagerness to take it, they're willing to burn it to ash.